You're listening to the Ask Drone You podcast. You ask, we answer your drone questions. Whether you're here to turn your passion into profit or you simply fly for fun, we're a community of learners and teachers who aspire to achieve greatness. We are Drone You. Hey everyone and welcome to another fantastic episode of Ask Drone You. My name is Paul and I am very excited to have Mr. Haya Castello from Drone DJ to discuss this week's drone news. Haya. Thank you very much, Paul. Good pleasure as always to be on the show. And uh, this time we're actually physically live at the same table, which I think is awesome. So, I think uh, it is awesome yeah, as well. I'm cool. sure the sound quality will be much better for everyone yeah. as well. <laughs> but we are here at the FAA Symposium for 2019. And it's funny because as we speak to some of these um, industry insiders, it, you know, they're talking about what we want to see or what they're going to see at the DAC tomorrow. And they're like, well, if you've been here at the FAA Symposium, a lot of this stuff is not really news. So we are here to kind of bring break down everything that's been going on at the symposium. And, you know, it's really interesting. I'm not sure that this is an event that every drone pilot should attend. Although I think if you want to engage with the FAA and you want to engage with policy um, or stakeholders in general, then it's something that you've got to really come to. It's just one of those things that I kind of wish the price was more affordable for more pilots to join. Yeah, uh, I would agree. I mean, it's uh, it may not be easy or possible for a lot of uh, hobbyists and uh, commercial drone pilots to actually physically be present at an event like this. However, I do have to applaud the FAA in in terms of making the information that uh, gets shared here to make it available to a much larger audience. I mean, you can follow their stuff on uh, on Twitter. Uh, They have a whole series of videos on on, uh, YouTube. So they're at least making an effort to share all this information with uh, people who cannot attend. Definitely. And uh, check them out on at FAA news. But let's get into the first segment about this because I think this is really important. You know, they're talking a lot about improving safety and responsibility, you know, through education and reaching out and engaging the community as a whole. What does that really look like? Yeah, um, a big thing that uh, the FAA announced for this summer is they're going to have a Drone Safety Awareness Week. Now, we've, we've kind of asked them for the details, and I don't think they have ironed everything out yet, but uh, there's a big push to uh, take care of at least two of the three groups that the FAA identified, uh, the careless and the clueless people, and that through education, they want to make sure that those people don't end up in situations with drones where they really shouldn't end up. So the, the safety awareness program, that special week that they're going to launch this summer, is a big deal uh, in that regard. And I hope that we get to work with them on that because I think that there's a lot of education that needs to get out there. Um, but they also talked about, uh, you know, there, gosh, there's so much here going on. Um, f- where do you want to go next? Because I know the Lance for Hobbyists is something that was talked about significantly. Uh, a new knowledge test for hobbyist yeah. pilots was talked about. What does that look like? Yeah, uh, so continuing on the educational parts, um, basically what the FAA wants to do is have a aeronautical uh, knowledge and safety test uh, that basically every drone pilots, hobbyists or commercial, would have to pass through before they can actually start flying their drones. Uh, just to make sure that everybody's aware of all the basic rules and regulations when it comes to drone flying. Um, I think that makes a lot of sense. Of course, uh, commercial drone pilots would already have taken their Part 107. Uh, this is not to replace Part 107 at all. It's supposed to be a test that's a lot more uh, enjoyable, the FAA called it, um, because they do realize that if you make a test very hard and dry and difficult to take, a lot of people aren't going to take them. If you don't take the test, then of course, you kind of defeat the whole purpose of, of trying to uh, take tests and, uh, and uh, make people more aware of all the rules and regulations. So the FAA is focused on making a test that's easy, that's somewhat enjoyable to take, and that at least will everybody get onto a certain level of knowledge when it comes to flying drones. And I think that's, uh, that's a smart thing. Yeah, I mean, it definitely helps, you know, stop the whole, I didn't know about the rules and I didn't know about where I can fly and where I can't fly. It's like, well, now it's pretty easy to say, well, you know, you took that little test when you fired up that drone. Yep. And uh, unfortunately, we have proof that you do know the rules. So I think this is actually yep. while some people may say, you know, I don't want to do this, blah, 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 blah. I think this is actually a really great thing. If you really think it through and you think about, OK, people are mad that there's not a lot of enforcement. People understand. 
understand that the FAA has a compliance philosophy. Now, if you do cause multiple problems, the FAA is going to go after you. But this provides essentially a way to stopgap that first step yeah. where it's saying, OK, we understand very clearly, you know what you're doing. Yeah, and I think especially for people who are going to be new to drone flying, so the people that haven't bought a drone yet but will buy a drone in the future, to catch those guys, of course, of those people and, and have them pass a test makes a lot of sense. I do wonder what they're going to do with all the people that bought drones years ago that may not have flown as regularly, that may not be aware of all these changes. How are you going to make sure that those drone pilots will also take those tests and basically get their knowledge up to, uh, up to par? Yeah, no, it's a very good yeah. point. Well, moving on to another uh, important theme here, at the FAA symposium is remote ID or a way to essentially showcase in the airspace who is attached to what drone because yeah. oftentimes, um, you know, as we heard from Brendan, that it's very easy to identify with an aircraft who the pilot is because they're sitting in the aircraft, but it can be a lot more difficult to understand who is the actual operator of said drone. Yeah. So, it looks like remote ID is also not on our doorstep, that uh, it may not be coming for a couple years, but I also understand that some industry insiders may be trying to work to propel this on a private level before the government has an opportunity to implement it itself. Yeah. That's, that's correct. Uh, the latest we've heard today actually is that uh, there is an initiative to be proactive, that the manufacturers in the US uh, will actually proactively come up with a remote ID solution ahead of all the rulemaking. I mean, the, the process of making rules for drones uh, takes time. I mean, there's just no other way around it. However, not having remote ID available is, is a stumbling block for a lot of the commercial applications that people want to use drones for. So if the industry can actually come together and come up with a solution that we can implement uh, much sooner, Sooner, then hopefully that will allow for new uh, new possibilities sooner rather than having to wait until the entire process of rulemaking uh, is completed. So I'm actually I'm, uh, I'm quite uh, enthusiastic about it. Of course, it remains to be seen if everybody gets on the same page and how quickly they'll be able to come up with a solution. But the fact that they're working on it, uh, I think is a very good thing for sure. And they're definitely saying that this is the only way that we move forward with all the advanced operations yeah. is to have remote ID. Yeah, I mean, that's that's a recurring theme. I mean, all the different uh, conventions I've been to, and especially this one, remote ID, and how that is a obstacle that needs to be overcome in order to uh, be able to fly all those other advanced missions, it, it needs to be addressed. So, yeah, it yeah. does need to be addressed yeah. 100%. Okay, well, in other news, you know, it was almost six years ago, Haya, if we're counting Christmas, uh, that Amazon said, Hey, we're going to have yeah. drone delivery. I mean, do you remember that big push? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Well, it looks like that they are finally getting there. Uh, obviously, they're going to need remote ID to do drone delivery, so yeah. we're still two years out. But Amazon Prime Air was here showcasing, you know, the drones, but also specifics about drone delivery. So what are these variables that are necessary to ensure safe delivery? Yeah, um, it was very interesting. One of the uh, panel discussions actually had Google's Wing Aviation as well as Amazon Prime Air as, as, as panelists. Uh, so it was interesting to hear that discussion. Of course, uh, Wing Aviation already got the FAA approval to fly drones for delivery purposes in remote areas here in the US. Amazon, uh, even though we haven't heard a lot of news about them with drones recently, uh, they're still working, of course, on their drone delivery program as well. And some of the specifics that came out during that session were that uh, the drone that Amazon Amazon is working on is going to be capable of carrying at least a payload of five pounds and will be able to fly around seven miles and the combination of that two should take care of about 80% of all the Amazon orders that people place. Not saying that 80% of all the Amazon orders will actually be delivered by drone but 80% of all the orders that people typically place potentially could be delivered by a drone. So getting those specifics was kind of interesting. I don't know if they meant to um, share that information, but it got shared during that uh, panel discussion. So I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah, no, I think it's really neat. But it also does make a lot of sense because if you think about it, if you are buying anything from Amazon via Prime, typically it is a small item. Typically yeah. it is less than five pounds. So it makes sense that they're trying to make a drone that can carry a vast majority of their products yeah. you know, to and fro. I just have to say, I'm really excited for the day when I can order, let's say, like a light bar for my truck, and then 30 minutes later, boom, it is that there. <laughs> yeah, that will fundamentally change retail, 100%. The economic impact of that is astronomical. 
Yeah, in uh, Switzerland, I think that was in Zurich, they actually had tests with uh, Maternet and Mercedes-Benz where they used drones for final mile delivery. So the truck would get in the area of where the delivery was supposed to be made, but then the last miles or the last couple of miles, those deliveries were made by drones. And they were actually able to prove that the drone is not only faster and safer, but also more economical uh, and also better for the environment. So it seems to make a lot of sense to have drones deliver packages in urban environments. Of course, when you fly a drone in an urban environment, and there's all these other concerns that, uh, that come into play. However, if Amazon is able to, uh, to overcome those and work with the FAA to, to be allowed to make those kind of deliveries, I think that will be a very exciting future. Definitely. Now, on one of the last topics that we have here is the UAST. This is something yeah. that I found extremely interesting because they're saying, like, this is the fast team, but for drones. Yeah. So what is the UAST? The UAST, um, actually I looked up their Twitter profile and apparently it was already launched early on in 2017, but it's a special team focused on creating awareness and improving safety when it comes to flying drones. And we just went to the session earlier today. Uh, we're gonna write an entire uh, article about this team and their purpose. Um, it's important and basically what they're trying to do is to get all the community members from the drone industry involved in spreading the message basically as, as to how you fly your drone safely and responsibly. And I think that, yeah, that's, uh, that's always going to be a good point. Definitely think it is an initiative that is needed. That is for sure. Well, let me ask you, before we, before we end the show, what, what stood out to you here? What do you think is some uh, of the most important pieces of information that drone pilots need to be aware of? Um, good question. Well, what definitely stood out to me was how, um, as a government agency, the FEA is trying to be very proactive, trying to reach out to all the community members. They are starting to use social media more and more. They got that special YouTube channel where they uh, share all the information. They even spoke with us about uh, launching a podcast. So that's one of the things that kind of stood out to me is the effort that the FEA is making to reach out to all the uh, community members in the drone industry. I think that's very important uh, to share that message, of course, the FAA always focuses on safety. Um, we've heard that throughout this whole event. Um, yeah, I couldn't agree with them uh, more. So uh, I think that's a very good thing. I do think it's a good thing. I think that there will also be some more news later on, hopefully this week or next week, about how initiatives are going further than the engagement that we just talked about in representing and showcasing the values and um, you know operational importances and nuances of just being a drone operator as a whole. And it's been one of those things where they're saying that you know these DSPs are not being represented as best mm -hmm. they could. And I think that there are going to be significant changes of that here soon. And then, frankly, I think that's extremely enlightening because we all know that having that voice, you know, that seat at the table is so oh, yeah. critical to provide insight on the nuances of actually operating in the field. And just one thing that I want to say that I think is really important is we just, we went to an enforcement uh, converse, a talk, I don't know what you would call yeah. it, presentation. And they were talking, you know, not only about enforcement against drone pilots, but they were also talking about protecting drone pilots against egregious landowners and drone shooters oh, yeah. and all that. So we're actually going to be having a show here soon with another FAA official to talk about the measures that are being taken. And we're really excited um, to talk about that. But what I love is that there are more and more people in the FAA that care about other drone pilots oh, yeah. and it's showing. Well, it's been, it's been showing throughout the show. I mean, how many people are walking around in FAA shirts that you can approach and ask questions? questions and they'll they'll help you with waiver application processes i mean they're there to talk to and to help you out and i think that's uh, that's a very good thing Definitely, yeah. definitely. Well, Haya, thank you for coming on the show physically. I appreciate yeah, it. Pleasure <laughs> to be here. It's different not having Skype in between, but uh, uh, sitting here real life at the table. I think it's uh, it's awesome. It it is. Yeah. It's a lot more natural too. You know, there's Way not more. that uh, that that lag. Yeah. You the know, delay when yeah. You, yeah. And then we can't really like tell each other. You know, hey, hold on, I want to say something before we go to the next yeah. story. Whereas now we can just kind of kick each other under the table, <laughs> yeah. like, hey, I got I got one more point to hold make. On, yeah. <laughs> no, I appreciate being here, and uh, as always, it's a pleasure doing these shows with you. Definitely. And make sure to check out DroneDJ.com for more news from this week as we will be writing as well on Drone DJ and providing content. So make sure to check it out. Hi again. Thank you. Thank you very much. And that's going to do it for this week's drone news. Uh, be sure to subscribe, download, and give us a review when you can. That's how you're going to support the show. If you have a question, go to askdroneu.com and upload that question just as soon as you can. That's going to do it for us today. You're listening to another episode of Ask Drone You. Drone <laughs> You.